All right, today I have the pleasure of talking to someone who joined us on the Gateway Experience in Ghana. And as you will hear, she has the perfect way to articulate everything. I mean, I, I think listening to you talk just kind of get it just kind of takes me into it's like I know that you have embraced everything that you've seen. So everybody today I want to introduce you to Gina Allen. I'm telling you, she is someone who's going to break this down for you. And uh, so Gina, how are you doing today? Fantastic, Jay. I'm trying not to. That's a wonderful introduction. Thank you. I'm trying not to let you and the people down. Oh, you won't. It, it can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell us about your journey going to Ghana and everything. Um, so so going on the on the trip. Um, you know, like I like I just said a, a second ago, life changing. Um, but life changing in the sense of 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 already having had a little bit of connectedness. So Ghana, you know. Fortunately, wasn't my first um, jump to the to the continent. I actually have been to a couple of other countries, but couldn't wait to get to Ghana. And so, um, and and part of part of that was just really, of course, the historic slave trades. And so, the other portions of of, uh, of uh, the other countries in, in Africa where I've been are, are southern African countries. But just couldn't wait to get there because I wanted to really really have the experience of being able to walk in the shoes of our ancestors for those of us who you know who are here in america you know um and and just putting I, I, it's so hard I'm, I'm sure you just had so many conversations with with those of us who went on, on the first uh, group trip with you and and none of us can probably still articulate what it was like walking into those slave dungeons i know that was just really pivotal and it was so um, so central, um, although we saw some other wonderful, incredible portions of the country, um, met, of course, incredible people, um, but just couldn't wait to get there. Feel really different having had the experience to really literally stand in the places that, that our, many of our ancestors um, took their last steps on the continent. And so, um, really, really changed me in the sense that, that, that I, was, I feel connected. I feel that soul tie, the real soul connection, because I got to really be there and I got to feel it. And I could, you know, it, it was spiritual for me. And so I felt like, like I was there and I could hear voices. Now I'm not crazy people. Right, 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 right. we got you. Just really that soul connection. And so you feel it and you hear it and, and you really experience it going and being there. And so, it, it's been absolutely incredible um, and amazing and just could not have and, you know, couldn't have, have, have selected a better opportunity to go. Well, we, we were glad to have you. And I think that as you're talking about this, when I first went in November 2018, I was sitting in a Chinese restaurant in Kumasi with Nana mm -hmm. and Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And I sat them down and I said, listen, I said, I'm coming back and I'm coming back with some folks because people need to mm -hmm. see this. It's so, it, it, this is something that is so needed for us to really understand. Mm -hmm. And as everyone who has gone on the trip, you know, everybody processes it differently. Right. But the one recurring theme that I've heard throughout the whole, everyone's experiences is how it just opened their mind up to, mm -hmm. Just, just to be able to be in that environment mm -hmm. and how it was an experience. And what you just yeah. articulated from the dungeons, it's uh, when you talked about it, because last time I went, I something I did I'd never done before. Mm -hmm. I'd been to Elmina before, mm -hmm. but this time what I did was I actually tried to walk through the door of no return. Now this was different mm -hmm. than Cape Coast. Yeah. Elmina's really tight. It's like, mm -hmm. and I could not, turn my shoulders mm -hmm. so i was like sideways right. in this door mm -hmm. and they talked about how malnourished everybody would be how they would just basically take them to skin and bones and, right. and they could walk through there with no problem and i was like mm -hmm. wow i said this is just as you were talking about being able to feel the presence and so then my when i was go going back in my head kind of hit the top of the door mm -hmm. i guess the, the concrete and mm -hmm. i was like wow i said i know that i'm brushing up against the mm -hmm. same concrete Mm -hmm. that they saw this they, they mm -hmm. what, what i'm doing right now they probably never envisioned somebody standing in this space and coming mm -hmm. back through here right in context so when you talk about it yeah it, it you i mean you really really uh said it perfectly what um what made you curious about going to 
Ghana in particular. You said you'd already been to the continent. So why, why Ghana? So um, I, I think, you know, the fortunate thing is that, you know, I, I know a, number, a good number of, of African people who live here, <clears throat> excuse me, in the States. And so a good friend of mine is actually from Ghana and just getting to hear stories from him um, and um, hearing just, you know, his, his travels around kind of Western, Western uh, Africa. Um, but of course, you know, kind of being home for him and just hearing just the connections and the things that he would say to me were um, just, just really, really that opened me up um, to really saying that, okay, you know, the next place absolutely wanted to go back to the continent, but the next place I definitely wanted to go was, was Ghana. Um, and, and, and clearly many other countries as well, but just hearing how how warm that he said that the Ghanaian people were. I'm like, I gotta, you know, I have to go and experience this for myself. When you got there, were so were people fighting in the street and people treating you like, uh, oh, look at you, lowly American? Did you go through that? <laughs> oh no, we listen. We were family. We <laughs> we just came home. It, it was just, you know, it it it. I'm, and, and you've been back multiple times at this point, and so it's like these just your people. And so just like you mentioned about, you know, having the experience of, of going to Brazil and you didn't know the language, but you were still, these are your people. And so you figure out a way um, to connect, but it's like, oh no, it, we, we're just the folks. That's the part that, because for years I was like, oh no, you better not go. There's going to be some civil unrest. There's something happening over there. You're going to get sick. This is, mm -hmm. and I got there when I, when I got off the plane the first time, I, I instantly, I, I was angry because I said, wait a minute. This is not what they told me in America. Right. This is not, right. this is, wait a minute. This, I'm, think, I'm waiting for uh -huh. some sort of, yeah. you know, gun. I said, I'm more concerned in America. Uh -huh. I'm, like when I got back home, I'm the one sitting in the parking lot looking, making sure nobody's, you know, uh -huh. rolling up on the car. And I said, but when I was there, I wasn't even, thinking like that it wasn't like their mindset wasn't even on that particular mm -hmm. it, it this in god in particular now i'm sure there's somewhere you know but it's mm -hmm. but it wasn't where we were and that was the part that i wanted mm -hmm. everyone to to experience and to see that mm -hmm. I, I like i said i've not had a negative experience in nothing severe nothing negative in ghana but even mm -hmm. on the continent I haven't had a negative experience out of any of the countries that I've gone to. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. I know people are right. people, wherever you are, but I'm just, it's right. like people are people in America. Right. So, yeah. What, um, what were some other things that, that kind of <laughs> resonated with you as you were uh, taking the tour? Um, so the, a couple of other things really stood out to me. Um, and, and I think, you know, the things that stand out to me the most are, of course, clearly the things that I like the most. So, uh, you know, the, our naming ceremony I absolutely had a blast. Now, the, the, the bonus of that is, is that so for me, you know, it, it felt like a it felt like you know we're in the village of course um and it felt like it was like the the village the normal village party and they just let us come um just by the fact that all the babies kept coming in and the elders you know they keep looking up and they keep telling the babies to go out but the babies right, right. Are like these are these are our children they don't they, they want to come in they want to be curious they want to see what's going on and so i just felt like we we were just, you know, we were cousins. We came over for the barbecue. Now, of course, clearly it was this incredible ceremony. Um, but it was just, you know, the curiosity of just wanting to, wanting us to be there, wanting us to be around and wanting to be around us. That was one of the things that was so wonderful to me. Um, gosh, it's like, how do I, how do I, how do I pull the pieces out? Um, going to, um, to, to the to Cape Coast, mm -hmm. um, you know, this wasn't, it wasn't kind of part of the tour, but being there um, at, at, at the resort, at the coast, you know, we yes. met, you know, in, in the evenings, you know, after we're, we're doing our tours, um, we're winding down and we get to hang out at the bar. Yeah. And so we get to hang out with the folks who live there. And it was fantastic. It was just great to kind of sit and kick it with them and talk to them and, um, and have a good time. And so, you know, we're out there dancing and singing and, you know, just having a really good time and just kind of chopping it up. And it's literally like kind of going to, you know, I, I guess what I'm, what, what the theme that's resonating is, is that we're just not any different. We just the people. Just people. That's, uh, I think the group we had was perfect also. I think. Oh, yeah. 
I think that part helped to even enhance mm -hmm. the experience because mm -hmm. what I, I didn't know, you yeah. know, when you get people together, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't know what, what's going to happen. Uh -huh. But I think the way that the kind of the tone that we set mm -hmm. and everybody understood we're here for a reason. And it seemed like everybody was kind of on the same wavelength with it. Kind of mm -hmm. when, when I say that, meaning we were there to see something. Yep. And and so I just kind of watched friendships develop, mm -hmm. uh, watching you all still hang out. See, I was in Brazil when, yeah. when, when you all got together. So I told right. Kia and Dominic, I said, look, when you all come to town, uh -huh. we want to make sure, because they're supposed yeah. to be coming to town soon. So I said, listen, right. we want to make sure that we just keep everybody connected because yeah. I think collectively, mm -hmm. everybody shared an experience mm -hmm. that's very unique. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's something that, it's a lifelong experience. And that's one of the things I was, I was really hoping mm -hmm. that that would occur, but it happened organically. I didn't have to manufacture it. I didn't have yeah. to, it was like, everybody was like, Hey, look, mm -hmm. you know, we were sad to leave. Yeah. And you know, but we were like, well, somehow we have to stay connected. And, right. um, mm -hmm. and, and so that's the wonderful thing. I'm actually going out to Vegas. Okay. And when I go to Vegas, you know, I'm going to go see our senior couple. Right. No, and we, I'm going to make sure, oh, I'm going to make sure amazing. we go, uh, see Miss Claudette and Mr. Billy. I'm going to go uh -huh. see them, the Archibalds yeah. and um, and Dominic. So I'm going to make sure I see her too. So right. all all of them. So they're in Vegas. So I said, okay. well, when I, whenever I'm in a city, I'm yeah. going to make sure I stop by and see folks who have been That's with us. Awesome. So that that was really. And when you talked about just that time, mm -hmm. you know, the the downtime, hanging out, mm -hmm. that's that really resonated. Also, why do you think? Um, why do you think it would be beneficial, or do you think it would be beneficial? for young folks mm -hmm. to be a part of mm -hmm. trips like this? Because I know that that was something that we talked about yeah. on the bus as we mm -hmm. were traveling. Why do yeah. you think that it's so important? So um, probably more more reasons than I can name right now, but but just a few. One, absolutely think it's important. You know, it, I think it was, you know, the we had a couple of young people on our tour. And so even as you guys were, we had our, our last prep call before we left. And when you told us the ages were 10 to 90, we're like, what? <laughs> like, how's that going to work? How's that going to work? Right. Right. And so I'm sure like, you know, to the point you just made, great, great crew of people, but just thinking about the life that our young people on the trip brought, like little Marcus, I, I think he, he, we all love him um, still, um, but having Victoria there who was, you know, um, the other, the teenager who was there and, and just the, you know, the seeing her kind of come out of her shell and just add so much energy and, you know, a little bit of a quiet energy, but just her energy and knowing that she was there being an ambassador for people in her age bracket. That's the important thing is that she's the person who gets to go back and tell everybody like, listen, I'm this age, I'm this younger age. And I went and, and one, had a great time. Two, I saw some things that I can't, that, that, that I can describe to you, but I can better show you by taking you back. And so just really creating that curiosity in young people, um, creating the desire to want to travel, um, period, and travel internationally. And like you said, you know, we're, you know, we're older folks. And so how long did it take us to just dispel those myths? Yeah. About, you know, folks who look just like us. Now, young folks, you know, those myths don't exist for them. They're not going in, they're not biased and prejudiced like we've been poisoned to be, yeah. you know, over these decades. Whereas, you know, they, they, they're they under 20. And so it's like they're just sponges, they're open. And, and, and so the wonderful thing is, is that they're sponges and they're open. But what they do is they, they do this and they communicate and they share that stuff. And they affect one another and they put that information out there um, to each other. And I think it's just the fact that they're able to take it in without bias, but they're also able to give it out because they share with one another much better than we do. And so I think that's the importance is that they don't, you know, the bridges are, you know, it's not a broken bridge for them. They'll cross any bridge because they're a lot more open and adventurous than us. And I think they'll take that back to our communities. And it's even if they take it back one at a time, they take it back much faster than we do. And so we need those young people to really be involved and, and to get out there and to really, you know, be the mouthpiece and the face of, I've had this experience and now I want to share it with you. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that we're going to make sure happens because I, I'll often reference how 
it took me until my mid forties to be able to mm -hmm. work up the courage and the desire yeah. and the curiosity. I probably had a little bit of curiosity, but then I had to work up yeah. the courage. Mm -hmm. And then past the courage, I had to work up enough of a desire to want to even go. And, yeah. and then when I got there, I really felt some kind of way. That's really mm -hmm. why I, I'm pushing this. This is what I do. This is this is like, listen, we and those of us who are part of the African diaspora, mm -hmm. we have to see these places right. for whatever download we're supposed to get from it. Mm -hmm. And and so if our youth can get it to your point, right. now it erases all of those years of you know, they get it under 20, so that's going to take away 20 some odd years. Of, right. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard that mm -hmm. this is what, and so and so told me. But mm -hmm. then when they go and they interact and mm -hmm. they have their own experience, like you see, like you were just kind of referencing the text, text messaging and social mm -hmm. media, they can put it out there quickly. Right. And then they can start making their plans earlier in life and, right. and really um, recapturing mm -hmm. a lot of what was taken from us. Mm -hmm. as a result of the mm -hmm. slave trade and history right. and, and all of the things that we've endured in this country, they can go mm -hmm. get this information and say, hey, mm -hmm. wait a minute, there's another story that needs to be told. And, and so oh, yeah. that's, oh, know, yeah. that's, yeah, that's the beautiful yeah. part of it. Yeah. And, and I know that your heart really, um, mm -hmm. really, really speaks to that. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. do you think um, it would be beneficial for say someone who is uh, even older than us mm -hmm. to go because because I'll tell you that on the tours the two that we've done we've mm -hmm. had several people in mm -hmm. their 60s wow. 70s and obviously we've had two in their 80s right so they saw something why would it be beneficial for them do you think yeah, you know, it, it, similar but different reasons as as for young folks, <clears throat> and and you know, love what you just said is that love how you you were you know I mean you're open about the fact that you know it took you until your mid forties. I'm also in my mid forties. Um, I've had a few different experiences, but but still you know need more. And and you know at this point you've done this multiple times and you're still learning. Um, and still absorbing. And I think it's for the same reason in that we've just, we, we have so often listened to they and them. They have told us and, 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 you know, we listen to them and they told us all of these things. And so, you know, to see our, our elders, um, one, be able to to get this connection and to be able to dispel the myths themselves that they fed that they were fed and then ultimately there are elders often unbeknowing un, you know unbeknownst to them they fed it to us right. so you know we got a lot of this you know a lot of the stuff that the, a lot of misinformation from them you know but they were you know they were fed disinformation um as well themselves and so you know just uh, it, it's so interesting you're going to see uh you know mr archibald i was sitting next to him um as part of the naming ceremony and just to watch him excuse me, just to watch him and how into the ceremony he was and they watched his feet and, and he just felt so regal and so honored. And then of course, you know, they honored him because he was the elder um, right. that, that was there. And so to see our elders um, from our home communities, to see them be reverenced by the people on the continent so that they know this is the way that we really should be treating you. And, I, you know, unfortunately, so often here, we don't get that kind of learning um, to know how we should treat our elders. And so just the fact that they get to, they get to experience this and dispel those myths that, that they had, that they got and they gave to us. And then to see them be reverenced and treated with such utter respect. Um, is, is, is all the reason that, that they need to go to. And, you know, we still need them, you know, just like young people will spread the word, you know, we still need to learn how to sit at the feet of our elders and to, to absorb that information. And if they're correcting or changing information for us, that's exactly what we need for them to go and get that for us too. You, you said it perfectly again, and, and I'm just watching all of the, uh, all of our elders that have gone, mm -hmm. they have all been blown away. Wow. And when I was sitting next to Mr. Archibald and mm -hmm. Mrs. Archibald, and I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm just sitting there listening to them. Mm -hmm. And he he made a statement. I think it was when we were coming back from, I was somewhere we were coming back from, and all the cows walked in front of the bus. He yeah. said, "I do declare, <laughs> I have never seen anything like this in my entire life." Oh my god! And, and so you know, for me, being 
at that time I was 46. And so I'm listening to him uh -huh. and I know that he's right at 90. And I'm saying yeah. to myself, wow, this is an honor to be in a position to create a space mm -hmm. for one of our elders to see things that he has never mm -hmm. seen yeah. in his life. I said, yeah. th I said, this right here is worth everything. Yeah. And of course, with our young people being able to see it and get it early, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to be able to witness him get it. And yeah. It, yeah, I'm looking, I'm saying, wow, it, it's, it's um, th that, that's why I say it's much more than a tour. You know, this was, yeah. Yeah, it was a tour, but this was like a, yeah, an, an awakening for many it was people. Part of the mission, you know. Yeah. And clearly, this was a mission that you were supposed to encounter for your life. You know, you you know, just it was incredible just to learn how many things that that you have been involved in in, in your career and in your entrepreneur in your entrepreneurship journey. Um, but just to know that, like you got a taste and you're like, I have to open this up. And so, you know, you know, absolutely. that's what it is. That That's what it's all about now, because because of people like you and I mean, there's certain people that just uh, just stick out to me. Everybody. I mean, I can remember everyone, but I remember that you you had no problem just articulating what you were seeing. And, mm -hmm. and it just always resonated. And I was like, you know what? That's deep. That's deep. You know, and I'm just listening. I said, that's deep right there. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I guess as we as we're talking about this, what uh, because because I know that there are people out there who are still oh my goodness I'm scared and why do you want to go and and we've covered a lot of territory, mm -hmm. but for the person who's on the fence to mm -hmm. you know they're like well I don't know if I want to go, mm, ah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. What words of encouragement mm -hmm. can you offer? to any person who may be on the fence or they're talking, you know, they're dealing with somebody who may be skeptical or whatever, but, but the person who's on the fence in particular, what words of encouragement yeah. can you offer to them? So the one thing, um, I think a couple of things um, off the top of my head that I would use as encouragement for anybody who who is, is, is just unsure is, um, just like you would, you would try a new location for vacation, right? Um, think about it as a vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it essentially is a vacation. Um, you know, there, there's just multiple components to it. Um, but just like as adventurous as you would be in trying anything else, try this and try it for the reasons of one, it's the unknown. Two, um, it's the unknown, but it's it's something that's connected to you in a way that you're not going to understand until you put your foot down. You know, I think the, you know, honestly, one of the simplest things I can say, Jay, you know, and, and I experienced this again when we got to Ghana, but the first time I, I went to, um, the first time I went to the continent, um, I flew into Johannesburg. Okay. What I can tell you is this, is that when I got off that plane and I went in 2009, when I got off that plane, and this would be one of the reasons I would say is that if you're skeptical, go so you experience this moment, is that when I came down the stairs off the plane, and as soon as I put my foot on the ground, I felt like I was at home. Mm. Is there any place in the world, in our country, that you feel like outside of your house, right, right. put your foot and it feels like home. And so just for the fact that, that you know, you've done a couple of these videos with those of us who, who got to experience the, the first trip. Um, and I'm sure we're all saying very similar things in terms of how, how welcome we felt, how at home we felt. And just the fact that we're repeating the fact that we felt at home and we felt welcome. I want to encourage people to take the risk and to try it and to try to see if there's any other place that you can go that you would put your foot down, you would look around, you would see that everybody looks like you um, and, and, and to see if there's any other way that you can feel other than to feel like you're at home. That's the, the bottom line for me. Well, you said, you, again, you said it perfectly. I, I mean, as I'm, you had me thinking about it because I was like, you're right. I, that is the, one thing that I felt when I got off of the plane mm -hmm. and I just looked around mm -hmm. and I said, wow. And that's why, that's why I said I got angry because I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you they want me to come back shot. here? 
I was like, why didn't they want me to come back here? And that goes into a whole other conversation. But <laughs> I was like, why didn't they want me to come back here? Because what is that to be afraid of? What is, I, and, and so mm -hmm. again, uh, mm -hmm. my, my mission is to inspire as many people as possible with the, the, mm -hmm. however long I have on this earth. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'm hoping and praying for many, many years. I'm hoping I right. get up there like Mr. Billy. You know, I'm trying to do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to him saying, now, what did you do? I'm trying to get some pointers. Now, how'd you get to 90? Because, you know, I, I'm about halfway, you know, I'm a little past halfway there. So <laughs> tell me, what, you, what did you do? And so uh -huh. uh, so it, it's, it's like inspiring people mm -hmm. to go and to get rid of them and they mm -hmm. and what they said mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, they told me, mm -hmm. it's like, no, go see, download it for yourself and mm -hmm. just allow that experience to be what it's going to be for you. It'll be priceless exactly. because you'll be the one person at the conversation and Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and everybody's talking about something. Yeah. So yeah. have you been to Africa? Oh yeah, I've been there. Like what? You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, did, did the elephants get you? Did the, <laughs> The, the, I don't know. Did the Zika get you? Did, you know, exactly. you, you know people. It's right. like, it's so, and you know what, Jay? My, you know, we, you know, we, we, for the most part, our folks, we were healthy. Yes. We, we had a good time. We certainly people go for the food. Right. <laughs> Some great food. I promise you go and eat in africa i promise go to ghana go to all the other countries oh every yeah, right because when i've been to other spots i've been eating too i oh, said oh man i'm telling you we had some of the best fresh yes I'm pr i promise listen i'm a fan of chicken and you have not had chicken until you have fresh chicken I, it was, um, you're right i i said the same thing i said i started getting adventurous uh -huh. i said when i first went to ghana i was afraid uh -huh. Cause I was like, okay, they told me not to eat anything, uh, so I'm over there <laughs> eating bread. <laughs> oh man! Oh, by the time I went to Tanzania and Ethiopia uh, and other places, I looked at the food. I said, you know what? <sighs> <laughs> it was too good. I said, That's a I, I'm, I said I'm, I'm missing out on something, <laughs> and, I, and I said, now I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to uh -huh. go too far and and, and venture off. You know, yeah. it'd be unwise, but right. it's like, hey, let, let me give this a, a try. And and uh, and I truly enjoyed that as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, well I, again, Gina, I want to thank you for just taking this time to talk with me and share with everyone your experience. And, mm -hmm. and I know as people are hearing you talk, it resonates with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that a lot of people out there want to go mm -hmm. and, and they just need people like us, all of us, all of us who are talking about it, all of us yeah. who are telling people about it, to uh, lead them in a sense on yeah. the journey so that they can feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And now uh, I'm just glad that so many, the walls, if anybody had any walls, those yeah. walls are now down. Yeah. And now they're like, hey, some other, some folks were like, okay, so what's the next stop in Africa? Where, where are yeah. we going next? I'm like, okay. I said, give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> let, right. let, let me get this done. Uh, right. But I know that we're, um, definitely East Africa is on the list okay. because there's uh, there are dungeons over in Zanzibar mm. that affect us too because yeah. of part of that the Arab slave trade and actually ironically the Portuguese started in Zanzibar mm -hmm. as well as West Africa so they yeah. they so when you go there you kind of like you're really blown away that East African dungeon uh -huh. was very interesting also so there, yeah. so there are other places coming but Ghana mm -hmm. in particular mm -hmm. is I call it the gateway because it. Intro, it's, it's kind of like an introduction to this side mm -hmm. of the story in Africa. So I, I'm glad to have had you yeah. on the journey. I thank you so much for yeah. trusting me with the experience. And yeah. I'm just glad that you have sparked other things, you know, mm -hmm. to, to you're, you're, you've been the catalyst for some other things that we're going to be doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's I'm a, still, I'm still dedicated to that. So absolutely um, excited about that and, and definitely want to seed into other people and young people, especially being able to be a part of the experience. So, yeah. And, and thank you. Thank you for really listening to the pool that God put on you, that you, you went and experienced this and you said, I have to come back. And what my service is, is that I'm going to bring people with me. So thank you for listening to that. And, and you being adventurous enough to jump out there and say, I'm going to make this happen. And whoever comes, comes. And it just so happened that you got us. Um, 
Lucky well, you, well you all were God sends also because it could have gone another way. So I right. okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I was really so thankful. Cool. I was like, I was like, oh my goodness. I said, you know, there's sometimes in life you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing uh -huh. because of how it all lines up. Yeah. And that's what I saw. And yeah. as we move forward, I mean, I, I don't expect, and when I say I don't expect anything different, meaning I mm -hmm. understand that this is not just a tour. Right. I understand that this is an experience. And people right. who are coming, they're looking for an experience because that's mm -hmm. that's how we put it out there. It's like, hey, yeah. this is, you know, we grown folks, even though even yeah. the kids were grown, you know. Yeah. <laughs> even Marcus. So, right. Even though, I mean, he was he's his age. Yeah. Everyone just kind of flowed. And so I think that's yeah. the beautiful part about it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's what we're looking to do. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so again, thank you so much. And uh, we'll you. definitely keep you updated on everything. Perfect. Appreciate your time this evening. Okay, good to talk to you.